Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. In today's video, we're going to start uh, working with the scikit-learn flavor, specifically for this video, login models. So as you can see here from the documentation, we have this module, scikit-learn, which refers to the flavor that we're going to use, and we have the method logmodel. Now, this is a model that we can use to save or lock a model using MLflow. So there are many parameters, uh, or this function takes many parameters, but only scikit-learn model and artifact path are mandatory parameters. The rest, they are like optional. So let's see an example of how it works. But first, I'm going to import MLflow and set the tracking URI. And here, I'm going to use a model from scikit-learn because I am using the scikit-learn flavor specifically a random forest classifier. I'm, go I'm going to create an instance of this uh, classifier. And then I'm going to use the method scikit-learn.logmodel to lock my scikit model. Now, for the scikit model, I need to provide the object that I created here. And the artifact path is my location in the tracking server. Now, notice something here. In this case, I am not training the model or the classifier and just creating the object. In a typical scenario, you could train the model first and then lock the model after that. So let me run this. And now I'm going to show you this in the interface. So here I'm going to refresh. And notice that since we didn't provide an experiment ID when starting the run, the default experiment was selected by MLflow. And here we can see the run, login random forest. So if I go to artifacts, we can see the structured package that I mentioned in a previous video. So here we can see the ML model that defines the, uh, the model itself in MLflow. And we can see that this particular model supports two flavors, Python function and scikit-learn. Python function is a flavor that we're going to explore in a different video, but basically, we're going to use this one when we need to load the model as a Python function. And the scikit-learn flavor, in, the ca in this case, uh, MLflow will load the model as a scikit-learn object. So for example, let's say that we want to load the model back, right, in the notebook, we're going to get the random forest classifier object. Now we also have conda.yaml and python emb.yaml. These are files that um, specify the dependencies or the environment dependencies for this particular model. We also have this requirements.txt with information about the dependencies for this particular model. Now, all these, uh, let's say, data or metadata was inferred by MLflow automatically. But we can also provide this information, uh, let's say, when we are logging the model. Let's say that you need a custom uh, dependency for your model. Well, you can specify that when you are logging the, the model uh, with the method mlflow.logmodel. Sorry, mlflow.scikit-learn.logmodel. And finally, here we can see the model.pickle file. Right? This is the actual uh, scikit-learn object or the random forest classifier. Now, let me go back to the notebook and show you another example. Let's explore another parameter, which is input example. It's very important that other people be aware of the kind of input that the model accepts, or what we call model signature. In MLflow, we can provide a sample of the data that the model uses as an input. So let's explore that method right now. First, I'm going to import uh, this dataset, load iris, and this is a demo dataset available under scikit-learn. And it's about classifying uh, some flowers based on the features of the leaves. So for example, here we have the features and the target, and the features are basically, are basically the shape of the leaves, I believe this word. So we have sepal length, sepal width, petal, and hopefully it's pronounced in that way, I'm, I'm not sure. But here we have the features or the columns, and these um, are supposed to be the input of my 
classifier. So in that case, we need to take a small sample. For example, in this case, I am taking the 10 rows only, right? And then here, when I am logging my model, I provide the circular model, which is the object that I am creating here. I provide the artifact path, and then there is a parameter, input sample, under which I'm going to specify the small sample that I took before. So let me lock this model. And again, just as a reminder, I am not training the model here because this is a demo video, but usually you want to train the model first and then lock the model. Now, let me go back to the UI. And here, MLflow created a new run, this one, logging with uh, inputted sample. I'm going to go to artifacts. And now we can see uh, additional files. We have this inputted sample.json, right? So we have the columns, names, and the data. So this is very important because in this way, other developers that are looking at this model, they can know, hey, this is the input of my model. This is how it looks like. And we have this other JSON file serving inputted sample.json. Um, you can also use this sample data as a valid validation mechanism when you're doing inference, for example. So that was everything for this video. Thanks for watching it and see you next time.